I had asked the detective what she was doing when she was killed, and he said she was with peaceful protesters. When you lose a, a loved one, especially when you lose a child in a public murder of some sort, you are confronted with that daily. Every time my leg hurts, I get mad because it shouldn't be like that. I didn't inflict this on myself. The dynamics of this city that don't get talked about, I'm not really surprised that they showed up here. This egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. August 11th was traumatizing with those torches and stuff. I mean, I was right there too, the night before August 12th. Yeah, I was at that rally too, the handful. Was Heather there? No, she wasn't. She was actually at home watching my live video, which is the reason she decided to go the next day. I mean, how could you not have gotten involved as a member of the community seeing like literally KKK members and white supremacists like at your back door. I felt like I morally didn't even have another choice but to show up and make it be known that, you know, they weren't welcome here and they weren't wanted here and no one asked them to be here. came down a cross street and all of a sudden it was Marcus pushed me out the way. I just moved so fast I fell down right next and fell down right next to Marissa. Um, and so then he started backing up um, and we thought he was going to run us all over on the sidewalk. Um, and so we both ran separate ways. And then I immediately like ran around the corner and threw up like projectile throw up like probably like two hundred feet from where we had just got ran over. This is a day you, you don't want to remember, but you can't help but to remember. When you see a picture and look at a magazine and see your picture, you're like, damn, takes it back. Justin, her best friend, called and said, the hospital is looking for you. And I said, what hospital? Who, who needs me? What? What's going on? So immediately I was alarmed. I said, where's Heather? He said, I don't know, I think that car hit her, that car. I said, what car? And I had no clue, had not watched the news. So I yelled for Kathy to come drive me to Charlottesville. And I was thinking, this is not good. But I was hoping she was just unconscious maybe. And um, so they walked me up the ramp and I walked in and the detective said, she was pronounced, and I don't remember anything else he said. And I just put my head down, and these wails came out of me. All I could say was, I'm proud of what, why she was there. I had asked the detective what she was doing when she was killed, and he said she was with peaceful protesters, and the guy ran the car into the crowd and killed her, and I said, okay. And Marissa said, yeah, that's what had happened. They tried to kill my child to shut her up. Well, guess what? You just magnified her. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. What did it feel like for you when, when President Trump made those remarks about very fine people being there? I got three phone calls from people at the White House. I said, they sound kind of increasingly frantic. I said, what in the world is that about? So I turned on the news and saw what he had said, and I said, oh, hell no, I'm not talking to him. 
And I still maintain he really doesn't need to waste his time trying to reach out to me, nor do I need to waste my time reaching out to him. We're not going to see eye to eye at this point, and let's just move on. My reply to President Trump always is, think before you speak. Always tell the truth and be accountable for your actions. And I try to hold myself and other people to the same standard. It's not reserved only for him. You used to be able to say Nazis are bad and people would agree with you. And now it's like, well, actually. Well, actually, there's some good in him. Some people go back and forth and go back and forth. And it's just like, you know what? You can't argue with stupid, so. I saw that the statue of Robert E. Lee is still up in the park. What's that been like for everybody here? And, and that says a lot right there for you. And that's when you got to question the people in Charlottesville. What happened? It happened here last August 12th. What happened here spout to other states, and they took their statues down. But they're still here. I actually voted. That let you know. That let you know. That's where the whole. This was. That was the reason of August 12th. Is that statue and it's still standing. So that lets you know right there and check the person in the power. Just like when they put the statue up to intimidate people of color in a town hall, yep. it's like now, like 50, 60 years later, it's just like now it's like, haha, we still have it up here. And guess what? We took the tarp off of it too. What do you mean by like some of the negativity from the community that you're that you're hearing? It's just backlash, man. It's just Miss Susan. Like why are you? Not, Susan, yeah, tell you me have she no. Used to drop it. Her daughter's gone. And you have no need. Shed a tear. No reason to come at that woman for anything. She look, lost her child. And look at how much grace like, come on, she's man. doing it with. You know, she could be somewhere just sitting there mope. She's making a positive change. That's what we want, positive social change. And people just have to stop being negative, start being positive. I had a really hard time figuring out why so much attention on Heather. She's not the first person ever killed this way. Not the first person to die in a civil rights incident. Not the first person killed by hate. It took me probably until a couple of weeks ago to really figure this out. And I think it's this whole myth that America still holds on the left and the right of the sanctity of white womanhood. Uh, people didn't seem to care if a person of color died, but if a white girl died, oh my God, my, you know, we must do something. I do want to point out though very strongly, she was not a leader at this event. This was not about her, it was about Black Lives Matter and the racial divide in Charlottesville that she was there to support. And I wanna redirect the energy and the focus that direction. I want to acknowledge my daughter's sacrifice, but I also want to acknowledge why she was there and what she was there to support. We went down earlier in that neighborhood and we saw that there were a lot of nice messages written written on walls oh, along. Yeah. So I, I do understand that there's been some community support, but you're saying there's still a little bit of division yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely still a little bit of division. A lot of community support, like 80-20, 80-20. Yeah, 80-20, yeah. yeah. Not to dent, like Charlottesville has been great, like with offering free, with like free therapeutic services, massages. I just wish we could all come together and not be 80-20 and be 100 and we would have so much more for so, so much more. Power. more. Something that's given me hope was uh, Marcus and Marissa's wedding. That was a beautiful, beautiful day. And it was beautiful leading up to it, too. Like, I was the maid of honor. Given everything that you've been through together, what was that day like for you? It was everything we dreamed of. Everything. It was more than we could have ever imagined, ever. I read that you kind of incorporated some of Heather's favorite elements into that ceremony, and then Susan was there. Yeah. Why was that important for you guys? Because Heather would have been there. Heather loved Marcus. So, yeah. and Heather, of course, worked together. We were friends. We hung out. If it wasn't for Heather, our story would have never gotten out. And the community wouldn't have felt the need to be like, oh, we need, you know, they've been through something so terrible. We need to show them love. So, Susan um, walked down the aisle um, right. just to kind of represent Heather and release butterflies. And a couple of them stepped to my wedding dress. So, how does it feel now that we're coming up on the one year anniversary of it? Uh. I'm not looking forward to it. It's the last of the firsts. The first year of everything is the hardest. First birthday she misses, the first 
Mother's Day. Do you have any plans for that day? I'm gonna take flowers downtown. I'm gonna be speaking at an NAACP meeting that evening. Other than that, I'm gonna kinda of go with the flow. We'll see what happens on August 11th and 12th. Is there something that's given you hope in the past year? Seeing more and more people step up, that's what I ask people to do, is that uh, recognize that Heather's death is a call to action for everyone. Uh, don't be one of those people who goes, gee, the world is really awful. I wish somebody would do something. Be that somebody. If you see something out of line, speak up. Um, stop calling the police for every little offense. Stop um, assuming people are bad because of the color of their skin. She was about so many more things than just social and racial justice, but that stood for so much of her. I think that like, the way that she's remembered now is like, she's a symbol for all of us that were out there that day. She's a symbol for people that are still fighting for, fighting the good fight. Um, I think that she's remembered in the best way that she could be. If you learn anything from Heather's example, it's that you don't have to be a saint. Heather had no idea how much her small act of walking with her friends that day would make on the world. There's no way she could possibly have imagined the outcome. And thank God she didn't know she had to die that day for things to happen the way they did. Um, nobody should ever have to bear that burden. But regardless, her small act made a tremendous difference.